I've told a great many secrets, tis true. Beyond this door lies the Holocron Vault. The Holocrons contain the most closely guarded secrets of the Jedi Order. And welcome to another episode of Tales from the Holocron Vault. Uh, look, we got my co-pilot, Solo Wookie. Solo, don't rip anybody's freaking arm off this time, but list, we're going back in time. We're doing extended version. Say hi to everybody. What's happening, everybody? Kathy Ireland, I love you. <laughs> and Leaky Trooper is not just uh, our, our know-it-all about trooping and Legos. He's also our editor. Leaky, edit that out, please. I will. <laughs> I will not. It was beautiful, Wookie. It was beautiful. Speaking of add-ons, we uh, remove one, add one on. That's how we always go. Unfortunately, this is an add-on to Thrawn. Jen wasn't able to be there. She was really mad. She twisted all of our arms, so we left more parts for her to do. She is now with this part, plus she has a weird, crazy theory. Jen, I'm not as good as you with the thing when you did your intro. <laughs> Jen, say hi. Hey, everyone. All right, so this is it. So look, uh, if you watch Thrawn, we got done with Thrawn, and I was like, that was crap. I didn't like it. I wanted to do even more and more and more, but it would have gone on 15 hours. So we start to, we're start we going to start doing all these little side rails to Thrawn to try to explain more and more stuff. Uh, we're, our options today was to do a side rail where we explain what happened, uh, kind of breaking down the air to the Empire because we were going to go that way. And then that became 15 different side trains. And then Jed said something and we're like, cool, we're going to do that. Originally, we were going to talk about the who got uh, an heir to the Empire Thrawn had assembled after Palpatine's first quote unquote death, the whole, all the Im Imperial uh, star destroyers. We know that in now in Canon, that is this young lady's job. That is uh, Ray Sloan. So hopefully you all have your, uh, your 12s for Canon. We will, however, break down Ray Sloan at some other time, but that's not what we're going to get into because it's something that Jen has said over and over again. And finally I was like, we just have to do it. We have to do it. Uh, it clicked with me when she kept saying something. She's like, Hey, you know, there's a character that Snook and Palpatine keep saying, like, if it wasn't Kylo Ren, there was somebody else. And who could that be? And I was like, man, speaking of Thrawn, we got to talk about the Hand of the Emperor, right? Like, that's what we got to talk about is the Hand of the Emperor. Yeah, nice hand. Good yes, hand. So, okay. All right. Hand of the Emperor. So, obviously, there's not much to talk about as the Hand of the Emperor. There's only one in canon. And he's not around anymore. And this is him, Gar Saxton from Rebels. You might remember him from Rebels. Uh, he tried to use the like killer ray on uh, the Mandalorians, on Sabine Wren's family, and everything like that. Uh, he's obviously obsolete at this point. Um, and there is no actual canon uh, hands left. In the original legacy, there was 14. We aren't going over all 14 because, to be honest with you, some of them are irrelevant. Uh, a lot of them had to be in video games or were like, uh, what's their names? Westward type things, you know, playing the tabletop games. So we're not going to get into all of them. A lot of them have weird histories. One of them that we, that kind of may have showed up in canon. Well, he definitely showed up in canon, but he didn't actually show up because they only showed him his TIE fighter. Was this one right here? And we're talking about um, Merrick Steele. So Merrick Steele, I like Merrick Steele originally in Legacy because he was like, they did like this whole trooper thing with him because he was like uh, one of the pilots for the TIE Fighters. But like he has, these, he's got like the tattoo from the hands. Maybe we should explain the hands first. We'll do that. So the original hands, unlike Gar Saxton, Palpatine at one point when he started taking over, he went and started um, procuring children that were powerful in the force. I, kidnapping is a little bit strong of a word. But he was kidnapping them, kind of. If they were strong in the force, he put them through academy and start training them, uh, and trained them to be like his a bunch of different things: his assassins, his assistants, just a whole bunch of different plans. The one with Steel, Steel definitely was like an awesome pilot. He'd have the tattoo. He was really great. They brought him back into regular canon in one of the X-wing games. They just mentioned that he was in the star in one of the Tie Fighter pilots. Somebody we might see again. Not really, you're not really going to get any, there's no good books or anything on him. Just a couple of mentions and stuff like that. You're not going to get any good comics out of him. But actually, what a cool I mean, they gave him such a, I mean, he sounds like a, a private eye, like super. He was yeah, cool. Like double, I mean, not an A, that's steel. I'm steel. So, 
a lot of these a lot of these hands do have things in common like they're a lot they're almost like in a combination well one of them was an inquisitor but there are a lot of combinations of like inquisitors assassins like um spies like that all they're all pretty all pretty cool to be honest with you when you so, when you so marco question yeah because you know and this isn't just from game of thrones but traditionally the hand like the hand of a king or in mafia the consigliere it's usually a counselor so in this case the hand is not a counselor to the emperor it's not more so much. Like, there was one and we'll get on list with the five yeah. first, but is the hand of the emperor somebody that does his dirty work for him? Like, yeah. So they started writing different ones for different portions, and some of them had uh, definitely more influence like that, and then some had special tea jobs. Um, starting off, besides Merrick, who was kind of just like he was like the he was later on and they, they kind of made steel like the, the one that always had to deal with the airplane or the, the space fighting battles and stuff like that. So that he could take over some of the games. One of the uh, other ones that was pretty important first off. And this is kind of, this was like the original uh, Annis was the one of the original, like uh, grand inquisitors. He was the original grand inquisitor. So he kind of was more, He'd go out and head the Jedi's. All, a lot of these had also to do with the Vong. Like they got into the Thrawn era. It was all the way through there. They they a lot of them survived past uh, the actual first Emperor in that because we do remember in Legacies there wasn't just one Emperor. The Emperor had cloned himself multiple on top of multiple times. Um, this was Atis was the first like cyborg, uh, Grand Inquisitor type. That's what they kind of based the Inquisitors off of it. He did have. Like Vader was kind of in Legacy 2, Vader wasn't just like the fist hand of it. He kind of was the assistant hand in a lot of it. You had Tarkin there for a while. You you also had Vader after the first Death Star blew up. You Vader was very um obviously he killed a lot of people, but he he was like that Sith apprentice thing wasn't how it is now. It wasn't so much like submissive to certain points. They brought that in more recently. He was more like, okay we're working kind of almost as a team and you know, it wasn't, it wasn't as like it is now where they kind of, I don't want to say wussified it sometimes, but if you're reading current Vader and if you've read some of the other stuff, they were trying to explain why he would turn on palps. That's not how he was in legacy. He, it was more like one Sith party, like right and left hand, kind of like the consigliere and, um, and, and the Godfather. Now it's, you know, now it's a little bit different. Now Palpatine's always and, testing everything. And to, I'm afraid to even bring it up or say it because of the rabbit hole, but it, there was Vader and Palpatine working together in a big master plan that Palpatine had versus what we saw in the Clone Wars when Darth Maul went and started doing his own thing because he went and defied Palpatine. And then Palpatine was like, all right, now I got to take it down because he wouldn't be that submissive and he was trying to do other things, blah, blah, blah. But it, it, you're, you're, I totally agree that a lot of the hands ended up starting to become more um, following of Palpatine's plan because Palpatine again had a grand plan. Yeah. So like the new Thrawn and we were kind of talking about the last video, how he like, he had the robot things and he pushed them out and everything like that. And there was a bunch of Imperials that would have these small after plans when he passed away. Originally it was the hands were the people who had the after plans he bring him in originally, train him up, and it was for when he passed away, uh, or force vanished to grow into the clone forces. They were the people that were still going to take care of the time period till he could be done. This cyborg uh, Grand Inquisitor first shows up in Star Wars Galaxy Magazine number seven. You'll see this in these like gamer magazines, a lot of these uh, characters too, because that's where they started expanding a lot of it in the roll top and in the gaming sector. Uh, some of them, some of the major ones we're going to, there's at least two major ones we're going to hit later that you can actually find a lot more comic book um, and the interlink in it. But to start off, that's kind of where it is. Oh, but well, the next one we're actually going to talk about, Baldy McBaldbags here, who's Cornyn, who's also known. Okay, like this guy is the best. He's known as the Black, he's got three names. Cornyn, Black Hall, Shadow Spawn, right? Shadow Spawn is, is way The guy with the purple lipstick from Game of Thrones. Or is right. That- well, this isn't even how he really looks. This is like a game rendition of it. When you see him in comics, this is what he looks like. The guy that's saying Hail Lloyd Vader, where it's like that misty black hole. That's why they call him the black hole, because he looks like black hole-ish in the background. That's the character. 
Um, I think he, he'd look a lot better if he had a big gray beard. I'm just saying. <laughs> he also has got something called the Dark Hole Troopers. Yeah, that's right. Dark Hole Troopers. Dark that's Hole a good Troopers. one. Um, that's um, that's uh, um, wow. <laughs> So he was, this is kind of like what you're saying about like, were they kind of like, were hands of different stuff. He was actually kind of more like a, a dark force prophet. Okay. That's what he kind of was. So he did, he wasn't exactly the consigliere, but he wasn't like the cyborg assassin uh, inquisitor. He definitely was not that. He was definitely more of the prophet. He had the dark horror troopers. Very interesting. And if you can find these, I do know Star Wars collectors love them. But in the LA Times, they originally had comic strips that they produce stories. Those have been collected. His first appearance is technically in those comic strips, but obviously they collected them. You can find these for like a dollar. Nothing like great. There's not people that are really like going after them, but if you need to finish off your collection, this collects a lot of those um, LA times comic strips. Cause that's like kind of how they redid the stories was in this thing. And then you can get also a uh, black hole. You can get yourself a black hole. Um, those, uh, that artwork on those um, classics is very unique. It's very, um, I, I, it's I almost say, I want to say that it's bad, but it's not. I really oh, am it. actually kind of drawn to it just because it's on very, the cover. Well, look at yeah, the trooper and look at C3PO. That is definitely Ralph McQuarrie. So it was a take on McQuarrie and it was 90. Mm -hmm. So they would use the bright 90 colors like Saved by the Bell. Mm -hmm. I almost bought a house that they must have loved Saved by the Bell because it had all this Saved by the Bell, like this coloring in there. But they um, they, they used a lot of those colors. They were very bright. They used the purples, the blacks, the blues, you know, and then the green, those uh, vibrant greens. Um, offset everything with shadows of black, silver, and then used red, you know, the dark very red. Comic strip art, though, the, the art, the way it's drawn, the, the facial features, very Inside. commercial and... and I like it. I like no, it. They're cool. I pay. I mean, I look, I'm not going to tell you I don't have this book because I do have this book. I'm not saying that I might have a couple copies of that book in the rest and of them. He you paid $2 or a dollar for No, it. I didn't even pay $2. I paid like 50 cents for it. <laughs> like, don't pay. Look, honestly, don't like that book is those books. They're fun to have, but like nobody touches them. People they look at them. They more in purple ink than 50 cents just on that cover. I saw one. Yeah. I saw one for $3. And I did, you know, this, I just, I did, oh, no, no. <laughs> I, was so upset. I was so upset that they had $3 on it, left, left, walked around for a bit and then like had to have a relax and come back. You know, like when you have that every once in a while where you see something, you're just like, this mm -hmm. is, this is no, not $3. And no. Yeah. Okay. So we'll move on. Uh, this, I didn't want to show the pictures that this guy really looked like. Very interesting character here, though. This is uh, Jenga Daraga. Jenga Daroga. Oh, sorry. My brain's not 100%, but it's pretty close to Jenga Daroga. Jenga Daroga is pretty cool. So Jenga Daroga was like the hand of the hand. So like Vader did kind of oversee these guys, but like the, he was like the hand that oversaw the hands that Vader, when Vader wasn't around to oversee the hands or whatever or the Emperor wasn't. That was him, right? And he, his major claim to fame probably was like the that Biss, like, uh, so Biss is like this. So, like, eventually, when uh, we're not going down there, yeah. So, the Emperor, just think about this Emperor had a clone on something, Biss, okay? That was the first clone body that he goes into. This guy was guarding that. That's like his major, major claim. He also did have some interaction with the Yuvon, the Yuzan Vong. All these guys, a lot of these guys too crossed over and had either a good or bad relationship with Grand Admiral Thrawn. Most of them weren't good uh, because Grand Admiral Thrawn at the time was trying to like assemble. He was trying to do the race loan thing. That's why we brought up race loan in the beginning. He was trying to assemble all the Star Destroyers and bring back the Empire, in air the Empire, that type of thing. And these guys knew because they were trying to bring the re coming because they knew that Palpatine was coming back. They weren't exactly all on board sometimes. So with Marco, I, I have a question about that specifically, mm -hmm. like kind of entering the collecting phase and you guys, you know, had given me fallen empire too. So I, I did read air to the empire way back when did the inquisitors in the hands, were they in comic books that were off of air to the empire or were these hands and inquisitors, part of heir to the empire the timothy zahn books so 
Uh, yeah, so some of them, the ones we get to later, were the other. So there's two part. Look, the original plan wasn't for Timothy Zahn's thing to be so well received. He was actually supposed to be. If you ever, if you know, and you go back and look at some of the interviews, Thrawn, like Timothy Zahn, was supposed to be a setup to Emperor's End, like a lot of other stuff. Uh, books that did not end up winning the war. Actually, this storyline right here, Emperor's End, like it was supposed to be a setup for a lot of the. Uh, Big tech stuff like and timothy was like that's what so timothy when he was writing them was like oh yeah no i'm not gonna put that in my book but i'll kind of screw around with certain things that's why when he had the opportunity to rewrite the new thrawn he wrote it how he sees it now he has said that he's left some portions open for some characters to fall into place and some of those characters that we think he might have fall into place like the jedi we're going to get into one of the characters later in the relationship with Luke. We're not quite sure that was such a Timothy idea. You know what I mean? And there was a, you know, he didn't have, he didn't, he wasn't so much in love with certain things. And some things he did say, like, absolutely, I'm not putting it in there. And then other things he had to put in there. So, like, that's why when you see Air, you see Emperor's End, you see all that and some of that stuff, you haven't seen any of it. And, like, how... Thrawn was such a bad because he was he was kind of a bad guy right he took over he thought he was taking over for what the emperor was and eventually he was helping out the emperor's clones but like he's not that same character in the new Thrawn like the new Thrawn that they have in Rebels he's not the new Thrawn that the books are in that he does he's not he's more out for his chiss he isn't like in the original air he is all live and die oh, yeah, the emperor. For the emperor. yeah. Yeah, live and die for the Empire. He is not any... This new Thrawn is not live and die for the Empire. He's live and die for me. He even says it in one of the books. He's like, I'm coming. I was... Because Vader corners him and goes, I know that you're not like ride and die, homie. And he goes, oh, no, I'm not. He's like, I promised that I'd be here. But he's like, I'm definitely not ride and die for the Empire. He's like, I was actually going to come here and conquer you guys if you were too weak. But I know you, Anakin. And that's why I came back. Because the first time I was, was here, you were too weak. And I was coming to take your technology and leave. But I see you have a little bit of power here now. So now we're going to work out a little bit of agreement. And that's the new Thrawn. The, the Thrawn isn't like, you know, uh, the old one. He now is more calculated. They're doing a lot better stuff with him. He's a strategist. Stra you know, like like we say in the Thrawn thing, that's always my mobile gaming tag and everything like that. It's because like a lot of those games are strategy based. And it's kind of like he's the chess player of the Star Wars world now. Right. So like I really like that element of him. Um with that being said, so the Emperor, he guard the, we were talking about dual lightsaber, the car guy, double. His, he does show up in this book in Emperor's End. Um, if you thought that Air of the Empire is pretty bad, Emperor's End and Emperor's End 2 is about the quality of. If there's another run on toilet paper, you got something. Oh, you, you mean Dark Empire or Fall? Oh, yeah, Dark Empire, you're right. Yeah, Dark yeah, yeah. Empire yeah. too. Okay. Yeah. 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 I just finished book six of that, so I don't think I'm going to be reading Empire's End. So I'm glad you told me about it. No, I never have to read that. Yeah, they it's not, they're, they're still a better read than Jedi versus Sith. Jedi versus Sith wasn't a bad read. It was just the art was pretty bad. Dude, hmm. everybody loses a hand, and there's a golden pirate ship. Spaceship. Were there any centaur? This the centaurs too. Remember, don't forget them. There's, there's no centaurs <laughs> in Empire's <laughs> End. Dead Emperor or any of the Thrawn slash Yuvan Yang slash no, none of those, none of them at all. There was not. You guys are trying to sidetrack me. <laughs> Let's get back. Now we got two I... more characters. We have two more characters that we're actually going to cover here. Um, and it's kind of big one. These are really big, and they kind of these are the ones that mainly show up in the comics and interact with each other. Um, also, when Jen had her theory again, what was the theory, Jen? Well. That because it we kept hearing that uh Vader and uh Palp Palp and uh who's the other uh shoot Snoke Snoke had like a, another apprentice out there, we just never got to see them. Yeah, so one of them could have been this character. Uh this would be this a way to do it, or merging these next two characters in my mind would probably be the easier way to do it, and this character is let's see what we got here ah 
Shara, so she's Shara right here. So technically, there's this character in one of the old school Marvel books, Marvel 56. And that's the one where you've got a Lobot, like double hand grabbing. Solo, give us the rundown of the cover. You do such a good job. Well, what we have here, <clears throat> we have Lobot in a hand, double hand clamp fist, taking a swipe right there at our good friend Lando. And we're not down for that because Lobot's actually programmed and kind of controlled by Lando. So what could possibly be going on in this scene? Yeah. So what part of it is... <laughs> so Star Wars, it number 56, original volume one. Yeah, original volume one. Very good. Great art coloring. I do love some of these Star Like the coloring on some of these original Star Wars Marvels is good. I wish Marvel would probably go back to using some of their original... Uh, paper and and, and I can't tell you how many times I entered to win that Columbia 10 speed back in the day. I never got one. <laughs> oh man, you destroyed books. All right. So anyways, <laughs> so in this book, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to clean up uh, cloud city and Bespin and um, you come and find out somebody named Shara and what Shara really is, is she is a spy for the emperor. She's one of the emperor's hands. She kind of fights with Luke for a little bit, uh, but eventually ends up betraying him and getting in a fight with her. She does start getting cybernetic parts. She, she her real Darth name is or hand name is Lu, Luma 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 Lumia L U M I Y A Lumia Lumia. We're going with Lumia. Uh, you can find some great stuff with in, once again here. That is Star Wars Galaxy Magazine number three. Not only one of the my favorite color covers of, of, of this uh, run of magazines because I like the, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, what's their names and, and like they're battle axing each other and they got the, the Morian guards. The, yeah. The Morian guards and they got the stormtrooper helmets out and, you know, I own a couple of these originals still in box. I do not know stormtrooper armor that fits on a Gamorrean guard. I'm but just going to like throw that out like there. If, if I don't, if, if I don't start eating less, I'm going to look like that in my armor. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> but real these Star Wars Galaxy magazines are getting a little harder to find, especially in high grades as well. They were not. Um, they weren't taken care of very well. well. Yeah, no, they weren't picked up a lot, and they weren't taken care of well. Yeah. Both so things is this not from the 1990s? When when did? Yeah, this was Tops. So Tops released. So Tops released all these. So it was like an add-on thing that they were doing when they were getting in the magazine game. Um, and yeah, they weren't like. I mean, you found them around, uh, not, yeah. So if were they companions like, to the trading cards in the comic books or what? A little bit of the trading oh. cards, yes, yes. Both yes and yes. Back, they have back. stories in them. They were kind of like tales. They'd have oh, like, I like gotcha. them. some of them would have written stories. Sometimes they'd have, it would be like written stories and comic stories and stuff like that. Back in the mid to late. Mid '80s, if I remember correctly, Tops had a pretty big run on on baseball cards and hockey cards and all of that, and did very well. And they wanted to try and branch out, so they got into comic books and magazines, and they published and produced some stuff for a little bit. But and these would be in the '90s, so these would be post Marvel. Flexible or anything? Yeah, these would be like late post Marvel run with. Yes, um, yes, I, I'm. So they made the money in the in the mid to late '80s, but they actually tried to venture out in the '90s, early '90s. Yeah, so then you get the once in these galaxies, what's cool about it is you kind of get to see the transformation of her in a cyborg part. She does uh she is the main oh no, this is cool. Yeah, so she kind of had Sith troopers before Sith troopers. That's wait, can you go back to that a second, Marco? I just wanted to see I that this, is like a force lightning whip. That's yeah, deep. she did. So eventually they kind of turn into her almost complete cyborg type Darth Vader parts. That she does have a whip, and right here she's fighting a character named does anybody know who that is? Mara, Mara Jade. Jade. Yeah, Mara Jade. And that's kind of how we can see the combination of the two. So we're going to get into her next. because oh, She has red what, hair. That's interesting. What mm -hmm. um, what sound would that lightsaber make if it's force lightning there, Marco? Give, give us your giggly, force giggly. lightning sound. Giggly, yeah. Giggly, giggly. <laughs> there we go. That's giggly, giggly, giggly. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, so Luma, Luma, Lumia, she she turned almost completely cyborg. But what one of her biggest things was she'd always like at first she was kind of teamed up or almost like pigeoned against when both Jade and her 
were hands. Uh, but then she eventually just became like the bane of the existence for Jade. And then obviously Luke Skywalker, if for those that don't know, Jade has a very interesting story. Um, uh, what I is can't remember why, but she had a huge vendetta against Luke and was very much hunting Luke. And I know yeah, it had okay. a little to do with Palpatine, but there was something else, and I for the life of me cannot remember what it was. So she was kind of she has very similar stories to uh some of the other hands. She was a, like actually Loom Lumen, she has like they're almost identical. Loom, uh, yeah. She they almost are identical. She was kind of a spy for a little bit. Then she was a saboteur. Then she was hunting down Jedi's. She actually ends up trying to get on the barge for Jabba. She gets caught because they think the guards think that she's trying to assassinate Jabba. So they kind of escort her out. She tells Jabba like, no, I'm kind of here to protect you. And he's just like, I'm not feeling it. You're out. Throws her out. So she kind of missed that thing. Then when the Death Star blows up, she... It's not going to lose her parents just, or she loses. No, she, no her, her parents, he took her away from her parents. So she was like a teenager or something. Cause remember he was like harvesting these children. He, so he, he took her away from the parents. That was early on. That was before he kind of trained her to be assassin and Darth Vader kind of helped out with it. But she like fell unconscious or like just became unconscious or something. She did some unconscious thing or she didn't get knocked out. She just became unconscious and then woke up. Oh Yeah. Now I think about it, it's really bad. She was like so, um, like they were playing to the like woman stereo. She was so emotionally damaged that the stress was so much that it forced her into an incon to unconsciousness. And when she woke up, then she was like no longer wanting to hunt Luke. But then they were like, she's doing a scavenger thing. Then she runs into him. And then she has to fight like Luma again. And then they... Like they are together. There's, kind a, of there's a long period in that novel in there when she first shows up, and she's hunting Luke like no other. She has a vengeance to get him, and I know there was no. something well, else that was tied I think to that. Time. And then they end up meeting numerous times because in the first time that they meet, Luke's X-wing is floating in space because he, I can't remember, he ran out of. Yeah, uh, space gas or something in his X-wing, and he's floating there, and he's stranded. And she comes by and saves him, and does not know that it's him. And then later on, they end yeah, up before. on a planet on the same planet, and, and then they're on the she's same planet. So, then she, okay, yeah. that movie question. I'm I'm the Padawan here. Is <laughs> um, when you say the novel, Mara J was introduced in the Heir to the Empire books. Mm -hmm. Yes. Gotcha. Because I the, the only reason I asked that is the 501st, where I'm part of, there's so few female characters, right, in the in the mainstream movies that Mara Jade and Asajj Ventress are probably the two most popular female characters of the sure. of the costumers, right? There's, and I have no idea what Mara Jade's history was, other than I heard she was associated with Heir to the Empire. Okay, All spoiler cool. alert. Then while she's hunting him on that planet, they end up finding each other and they end up having to help each other to survive on the planet. And she holds Luke captive for a very long time without, and well, Luke's like, oh, game. hey, hold this, blah, blah, blah. That. Yeah, that was after the unconscious part. So she does the hand thing twice. So she turns right, back right. again. But that, speaking to what you're saying, this picture right here is fan art. Fan art. Fan art, like there's nobody that fan art was more popular back in the day than doing Mara. Well, like okay. Mara Jade, there okay. was not. Well, her story, like, so if you if you kind of go back further, like the reason why she's so angry is because like that that's her last, uh, like mission is to go kill Luke Skywalker. Because to mm -hmm. her, like the way she views it is, I have power and I have training because of the Empire. Like yeah. this is so you took that away from me. Like I got empowered and people respected that's me right. and now that's, that's right. gone. So I'm going to come in. Like I'm going to do for sure what my last mission is. That's right. That's right. Okay. You're right. You're that right. That was after oh, the conscious part, right? Cause she fell unconscious. Cause she yeah. had like a hot flash for a bit. Well, and I think Palpatine puts it on her and says, if you fail, I'll kill you. And, yeah. But it was after, she, after she, that, that was after, no, he got the, yes. He said that your last mission is to kill, Luke Skywalker yeah. after he died. Yeah. So it wasn't like, yeah, it was like after he died. 
Yeah. Or well, and, then, or, you know, and then they get stranded the on the air. They get stranded on the planet, which I cannot remember. Brain farting, and oh, okay. they end up falling yeah, in love. Was it well, was that, no, I because it was, like, oh, Dagobah, the Yoda because, because no, it's he because hears, um, he hears like a story about how uh, these Jedi got pushed out because like in, in two Dagobah, and then you 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 uh, see him like say Dagobah, like because he was there before, and then so he goes back. Because he's like, you know, was he that was anything that they were going there because they thought Yoda was there, so then he had heard that they were, so then he went back. Was that it? It's something like around the, like that. Those lines, like it was a forest planet where there was the, one of the temples holding all of Palp- Palpatine's clones. Well, because if, if you think Palpatine about it, like that's you guys are combining two portions of the story. I think. Okay, that could be. I think you're combining two. It's portions. been so long since I read that book. I think. That's one because then they fell in love. Then, and well, either way, she ends up having Luke Skywalker's baby after the second portion, which is the two babies when she's protecting with twins. Yes, everybody has ba- two babies, but yes, well, no, 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 those weren't twins. I thought she they were. Two, I thought it, no, wasn't it? No, Solo had twins. Oh, so yeah, Solo had twins. Okay, Mara, Mara Jade, and Luke have twins. She had Ben, she had Ben. And then after that, didn't she have the girl, which was, uh, what's her name that's on the legacy stuff? The legacy books. Starts with a C. I could have sworn it actually was a Ben child in the original. Ah. Yeah, but it was Luke's. It was Luke and Mara. Yeah, Luke and Mara. Actually, like, I like that story a lot. Like, Because basically, it's it's the kids that then carry, it on, carry on the legacy. And then the one turns and it kills Luke Skywalker's kid, and you're just like, "What? This is crazy!" And then the sister to the guy who turns is this like turns into the sword of the Jedi or something, right? Sort of the. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Not gonna have anymore. No, no, you're right. It was cool. No, that was the solo one. Anyways, either way, um, yeah. So there were definitely ben, some borrowed elements from that in the new. Yeah, the new stuff. Ben was the original child for for the Skywalker, but Ben Skywalker. Oh. Anyways, so. She, we've messed this up a ton, so it's getting really crazy. The moral <laughs> story is she's the hand twice. She fights Luke three times. The time when she's on Dagobah, she actually fights Luma, I think, because that's when they get in together. Then she's in the forest, wherever they have to team up. She has a kid with Luke Skywalker named Ben, who they have problems with. Uh, and the Solos, right? Don't the Solos kill one of their kids? Yeah. Because the Solo twins. Well, yeah. even. Uh, so Mar Mar Jade's programming, almost right to kill yeah. Luke so strong. Doesn't she like to get rid of it? Kills one of Luke's clones to kind of like get rid of the clone thing. Yeah, yeah. it's some really bad storylines. There, <laughs> there really is just some bad storylines. That's why, like you know, when people are like, "Oh, well, it's great because they're gonna do," and I'm like, "No, it's really not great." Um, they bring some of that stuff back, man. The whole part great. is when Jason starts turning to the dark side. Jason Solo. Yeah, just. Jason, yeah. Yeah, Jason. Yeah. Which we don't uh, talk about because he killed Chewie. And if I ever find him. Well, yeah, so he was the character that, that Kylo Ren, Ben Solo. Kind became, yeah. Kind of, yeah, became. Um, this is the book, obviously, Heir of the Empire, Newsstand. We all know, good book. Uh, hopefully you had those already. But really interesting. People do love this character so much, and you get more story of it. There's also Star Wars Insider, and it's got her on the cover. Um, yeah. I think a lot of the uh, that's the one with her and it talks about Natalie Portman and everything else I think a lot of the fan art might be a little bit better than the actual art that they had the cosplay art that they had in the beginning of that book either way but this she could because of how you could do her storyline obviously she's not going to have a kid with Luke Skywalker like that's just not happening um, yeah oh spoiler well, that, alert that outfit on that magazine was the majority of the 501st cost, I shouldn't call it cosplayers. Oh my gosh, they're going to crucify me for saying that. But this is how I normally see them. Yeah. That's, this is her normal outfit. Yes. The purple lightsaber, the black leather. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that, I mean, for a cosplay at a, at a show, that's a great cosplay right there. And you'd know who she was if, if you're a fan. Well, but as far as like movie adaptation, that's terrible. Don't show I don't know if people would have. I hate to say it, but it's a badass costume, right? There's just not that many badass women in Star Wars, or at least up to that point. It wasn't up to that point. Yeah. But I don't think, I don't think in the last decade you saw as many as you used to see. Once you start seeing more of these, like, Ahsoka Tana characters come out, Sabine Wren characters come out, Aja right. Vento got pushed more. Right. You start seeing less of those. And I would, the last celebration, I didn't see a lot of them. And I'd be surprised if most people in the common, like, edit, Clone Wars on, like, I'm talking about the original, not one, two, oh, or three. Yeah. I mean, Sabine and the Harris. No clue who it is. Yeah. No clue who it is. I mean, the- no, absolutely no. No clue who it is. They just think it's somebody cosplaying as a Jedi. They don't know. Yeah, that. that's very true. But you're right. The Sabine. Sabine Wren, that that whole costume now is probably the most popular I've seen. Oh, good to be, yeah, Ahsoka's tough for them to do, but Sabine probably is the easiest. And yeah, the because fun. it's the Boba Fett armor with yeah. You see and some that, odd does and that Boba Katan. Well, maybe uh, yeah, yeah, like, oh, Boba Boba Tan, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we're saying in the last like five years of what we've seen at That's Star true. Wars Celebration at Con. Yeah, I, mean, I, have, I have to say, my all-time favorite is the little mini pink vaders the little pink vader outfits that are those little mm-hmm. kids that the little girls that show up and they're in the full vader and it's just all pink and pink. that's the cutest in the world man that's awesome but i think this character is like so far gone that people won't remember her originals like mm-hmm. i think it's easy enough because like this is what you got to do right like the true star not that you, that's you should never say that the about it, but like jedi the, masters yeah, Jedi Master fans of Star Wars will you still have to please those type of people, right? And it, they're not, it's not as they're not, you know, those were the lifebloods for the longest time. There is a wider now array of people. I mean, once again, we always say it, there were so many people that didn't even realize that Mandalorians took off their helmets. Like that was an outcry at one point. Like, what is this? Did it take it off? Well, Boba Fett never took off his helmet. No. Yeah. Well, look, at, look at how big a fan you became after that last movie, Marco. I mean, you really took the big dive after that last movie. <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean, well, um, I kind of, I, I kind of akin it to. Um, do you guys remember when the first Spider-Man movie came out and it came out of his 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 actual wrist? Yes. And people were like, "Oh, you know, his are going to and I'm like, "No, no, no." web shooters and then so that's like it's always the movie people who come out in the movie who aren't aware of like what's going on and then like just me like <laughs> well you yeah, know what i think is i i'm like in the because i'm part of the 501st i'm in the deep deep culture but i don't know the characters right like mara jade i knew when they when they put legends when they made it legends there were a lot of girls in the 501st that were so pissed because they were like now mara jade since they're making the pre the sequels and they're not making heir to the empire, Mara Jade is going to go away. But that's what's so great about Filoni. As soon as he brought Thawne back, that means he opened the door for all these characters to be reimagined. Well, and obviously, better, Mara Jade needs to be reimagined. It's better too because, like, I don't think I, I think we mentioned it in the Thrawn episode. Is like Timothy has said, I've left open gap areas so that certain characters can come back in. And obviously we think the two certain characters, because he says certain characters are certain character or certain tropes or something, whatever he says. And we obviously think that those are somehow he's going to reimagine Mary Jade, right? We think, or why do I keep saying Mary Jade? Mara Jade. Mara Jade. We think he's she's gonna he's gonna reimagine Mara Jade at one point, or at least if he gets together with them and say this is something we need to do. And the other one is the Yuzan Vong, which is the combination that all these, well, Yuzan Vong and, and Darth Krayt. The weird part is all these these hands pretty much have in common is Yuzan Vong and some of them have a really big tie to the Fell Army and the FEL, Fell Army Empire. And those ones, that, that's Darth Krayt right there. They have some type of form with Darth Krayt, including that Luma character. She definitely does. So like, you know, these are the things where you see these over and over and over again. And I know a lot of people are trying to guess which route it's going. And obviously, I think where you can make the fan base happy, the new people think like this is super cool. You're going to have to modify it, right? You can't now at this point have 
Ben Skywalker, right? We we can't have Ben Skywalker. Well, you, can't. Still, you could still have him. Like, there, so there's two options with Mara. There's the one that like she's the secret, the secret uh, apprentice, right? And then there's like a small sliver if if they just want to put her in there, is like she could have been like because you know he she could have been the catalyst because I know what Luke went to exile and it's like everyone's kind of like upset about that but like if you tied her into like hey here's this person who switched sides like he kind of fell in love with but maybe didn't go all you know didn't like go all the way or whatever but then she dies because of him that could also like it would make more sense for him to go into exile but do you think they're gonna backtrack yeah. on the we're done with the skywalker legacy well because like, you're hearing like do you see all these people like there's people who are like oh they want luke to show up and be uh grogu's uh like at least be make an appearance right the jedi the jedi grogu called out to yeah like everyone's because you know he would be around at that time but that's just i think that's like a fan no want. i just heard something the other day about that jen think about like ezra bridger coming back and then mara jade being affiliated with him somehow yeah so that's the thing that that's where good i'm glad you mentioned that because that's exactly where i was thinking it could go so all of a sudden we have, because now we're going to link it back up, because we're not, you can't do Heir to the Empire, right? Like, if you read Heir to the Empire, if you've read all those books, you and you've read the new stuff, you know that you have to throw away 90% of Heir to the Empire. The only thing you can do is take the characters and reimagine them. You, you can't do... Completely rewrite, because yeah, otherwise you, you got to get back into Luke and bring Luke in heavy. And, yeah, and you have to have all that. these... Ain't happening. You can't do the thing where he was hidden. There's no snow. You got to get rid of Snoke. You got to... Look, I mean, I'm not... And clearly Luke did not have kids in the last three movies. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not saying, like... If, in my I would opinion... Be sad to erase some of the, mo the new movies. I'm just saying you're not erasing those movies, right? Yeah. Like, you're not doing that. This is totally my own thought on it this has this is not a rumor this is not anything it's just my own thought 100 percent. if we saw luke show up because of grogu's call then chances are i would think he'd go you know what i'm not training people i'm not training nothing i'm having a life crisis i now know that your existence i'm out and that's it that's all you'd see i mean yeah, you'd probably. see a 10 minute clip of mark hamill out there saying yeah. I told y'all I'm but, done. I'm not, I'm not well, doing the loop. Like, uh, yeah. After though, no time out. You're getting the timeline screwed up. He's not. Yeah, uh, it's only not, five years out from Jedi. He'd still be building the new Republic yeah, and pretty sure. important dude. Yeah, the pro the problem with it is is w w Mando. Let's remember is not the story of Luke Skywalker. It's not the story of Ahsoka Tana. Yeah. It's not the Thrawn story. It's the introduction to people who do not know Star Wars. Yes. Right, of these characters. But in real life, Mark Hamill said, this is it. Like, we're going to do these three movies and I'm done. I'm, I'm not doing Star Wars anymore. I'll, I'll do small little snippets here and there, but I'm done. I'm not doing. He was already in it. He was the, the voice of the bartender. And, uh, yeah, he was already in it. So. Yeah, but I mean that's like the Mace Windu Absolutely. theory, right? Yeah. Like, like we're gonna do Mace Windu. Okay, well, look, <laughs> this isn't the like this isn't the rewrite, right? Like this is yeah. like bring Boba back so we can then sell the crap out of him and do a series like you do it. See, that's kind of the evil genius of what they're doing, right? As soon as they brought Ahsoka in, and you have Grogo calling out to a Jedi. Now that they've already shown Ahsoka, now it's like, whoa, who the heck is he calling out to? She Can please refer to our, our list that we did on our one video about yeah. the ones that are still left and could possibly show up. Right. So let's get off of all that stuff because that's <laughs> all thing now. We we have have all now. Stuff, let's talk about where this will be, like, because this is going to be a different element. We do think there's going to be, you know, a Thrawn, Ezra finish off here, probably in the future, right? Like, it's going to. We're going to see what happens with them. We're going to see Ahsoka pick up Sabine because right now that's not happening. The Mando, it's not, it's it's past Mandalorian's timeline where Ahsoka Tana picks up Sabine and goes out to try to find Thrawn. Okay. Now Thrawn and Ezra have been in the unknown region at this point for a very long time, roughly anywhere between six and nine years give or take because now the timeline is that's the one thing about dave like quit saying like give us a timeline stop saying like 
that's not how we don't know how time traveling works because it's not real. I get it. I understand it's not real. We're vested in some of this stuff. Well, the timeline could change because you don't know what point of yeah, I get it. But when you have timelines on all your books and you have timelines on all all the magazines and everything else you sell, just put it in the timeline. Okay. Enough with that nonsense. Um, but what we do know is that they're out there. So how cool would this be? And this is where the theory kind of plays out is if, okay, we know Sloan's got, we know Sloan has got the Imperial Star Troopers, right? Or the Inster So somehow she gets them buried on Exegol, all that nonsense. She has to get all those guys together. She's already been forming all that portion of it. Thrawn is trying to take care of the Grisk out mm -hmm. in the uh, wild space. We know that the Grisk may lead to uh, something bigger, and which is what they've kind of hinted at. We'll see if they completely go with that route. If they do, that's the Vong. At that point, having them cross over and, you know, we have an Imperial Trooper who also happened to be somebody who knew all about uh, Palpatine's barge and all these other small parts out there. Um, obviously, Sloan did not show up in the three movies, so she wasn't on Exegol. Where is she going? Who could she be going after? We know Gideon has something to do with the Tarkin initiative. If you make the hands part of the Tarkin initiative now, we could see Ezra and Mer and Jade. I don't want to see it because, look, you know I'm a big fan of uh, – what was it? Ezra Bean? Ezra Bean and Ezra Bean Child? That, that could be the, the little triangle, you know, the little, like, you know. Yeah. Do you remember Star Wars uh, recycles, repeats, rinses, and does it again? You know, so that could be it. You could see that type of climax, even if the climax is okay. We've handled off the grisk. We figured out how to jump this point. Let's bring because if we want, look, I want as much thrawn as I can get. But realistically, it's not. We're not. The thrawn isn't. You know, the end all be all, right? Like there's other stuff going on here that we need to have happen because he's. They've changed him from being the end all be all to being like kind of a midterm player that looks after himself and does other stuff. You know, we think. Al, you, don't, you don't think that Thrawn is the new big bad? You you think? Well, I mean, how they're playing him out, like, look, look, we know that he's going, he's already sent out somebody without the Empire really knowing it to go be with Ala Ara, who is in charge of the Chiss, like, yeah. naval. And if you army. think about it from a plot arc perspective, Wookie, what you were saying before, how they're in show building mode, right? I think each show is going to have its own, you know, hero and um, uh, what's the, what's the term for the, uh, the antagonist. <laughs> yes, the antagonist. Yes. That's, that's the word I was looking for. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they start introducing like an Ezra and as they get later, but I think Mandalorian, they're already in the second season. And, you know, I know Favreau's had game of Thrones, but I think the game of Thrones is the show building. These are going to go into other shows. So I think, oh, yeah. like you said, if Sabine and Ahsoka go out, Thrawn's going to be their baddie. Moff Gideon is this baddie. And so oh, what if he isn't though? What if he's not? What if he's see like the, like a lot of when I talk to like Jen and when I talk to Solo and even you, but also like people like Horn, you know, everybody knows Steve Horn's a friend of mine, and, and so is Lopez and a lot of the guys that are in our chat. Like a lot of them have said before, too, like when I try to when we try to talk about Thrawn and how he's changed, you know, one a lot of people say like he's, I was always referring to him as like the gray character. Right. And one of the brilliant things that some people have been saying now is he's not a gray character. He's kind of like the anti-hero right now. I was thinking like, well, is he like Punisher anti-hero? No, he's more like Moon Knight, the true Batman yeah. anti-hero. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, cause you know, Moon Knight is way better than Batman, but that's neither here nor there. Cause it's Star Wars. Talk. Um, but he's kind of like the Moon Knight. And Poe oh, Dameron is rumored to play Moon Knight. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's well, that, would, that would make total sense because I was just thinking, how could they bring Galactus? I mean, they got those rights coming up. So if they could bring okay, Galactus, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> no, but that's it. So he's not. He's not. He's neither. Like you got to remember, he is really at this point because he's. he's Go ahead. He, he's an extremist because he's just right. trying to he's just trying to get together a powerful force to be able to prepare for a bigger force that's coming. And and yes. he, he just went a little extreme. It's kind of like a Killmonger-ish type. But I don't think I think it'd be really cool to truly see him be bad for a little bit. But then the turn of like 
and then staying with it. And then like, he could be like with like a part of that game of Thrones force to then be, you know, for but the I think that's kind of where they gave it to us. So like the rebels version of him, where you think he's like, Oh, look at how sadistic he is. Yeah. Even though he does, you know, we talk about it like hair is there. He doesn't actually tour. He doesn't use any of the Imperial stuff in the yeah. original version. He does like, he's all in, like he's torture yeah. droids. Like yeah. he, he's not playing like this one. He is. And like, when you start to read some of the other stuff and some of the other books, like even the comic books, one through six, like if you actually read those, you would know in the original comic in heir to empire in all that storyline remember the empire saved him from like he was exiled he's not exiled anymore it's a setup yes it is a setup he is not exiled at all he is purposely on that planet he definitely makes sure that they know he's there he shoots down a thing so they will find him when vader confronts him he he admits to it that's it's a whole different thing, and that's it. You're right. He is all out for himself. So I think we kind of well, have. Seen that. The, yeah, is he all out for himself, or is he all out like um, one of the story tropes I've seen is like fanaticism, right? And that's been consistent through Clone Wars and Rebels and into Mandalorian, right? And if if Thrawn is like a fanatic for Chris, if if he's a fanatic for his home and he's and he's waiting for the bigger power and and he's a little bit of a fanatic. I could kind of see him being bad for a while and then flipping. Like all of a sudden there is a bigger force, but it's not the threat. It's not the threat he thought it was. So now he could kind of come around, you know, on the same side as the heroes. Okay. So let me explain to you who Thrawn is. Thrawn is Sheldon Cooper from the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> Yeah. No, laugh all you want, but no, no, no. I, 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 I'm yeah. putting it together. Yeah, you get what I'm saying now. He's yeah. not. It's what he does. He doesn't see as bad. He sees right. a means to an end. And if you're going to waste time, if you're going to, he doesn't understand the political. Like he played a big political player because obviously when he was heir to the empire, emperor, you had a you had to play the political aspect. He doesn't actually. It, right. it hinders his career path with the Chiss. But he has an underlying belief system that drives that, right? I'm saying it's like well, a yeah, system. Definitely, yeah, he de well, he thinks that obviously he thinks there's he thinks that there is a bigger bad out there. There's a bigger yeah. bad out in the universe, and it's going to kill him. Yes, this is all about him. Like, hey, I'm not only saving my society because he really does think he's he he does he's appreciate, crazy. even though they yeah. even in the books they have. The Chiss has treated him poorly at certain aspects because just like Sheldon, he doesn't understand social norms. Right. But he just like how Leonard will sometimes give him a hard time or they'll play pranks on him and he doesn't get it. He's never truly like terribly mad at Leonard. He doesn't go like, OK, I'm going to take over. the. I mean, he says it, but he's not really going to try to take it. He's not pinky in the brain. Right. But like he he's the same way. He doesn't understand those social norms, but he really does have a lot of thankful for all the people. And he really likes to solve the puzzle. Yes. Come up with a solution. He doesn't want the recognition on the back. Yep. He just wants to solve. That's his thing. He's solve a the puzzle on the back. thinker. So he, so that when the tactical comes into play, he'll, he'll be able to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Like his learning, big weapons, weapons. learning the, the enemy's weaknesses, learning their strengths. Yes. His big win is his own self-resolve. That being said, like he does, you see some parts and especially the last novel that came out, Ascendance or whatever, where they go to like the early years of him when he adopted to the Chiss family. We got adopted and moved up because he really wasn't, we covered some of that earlier in the last video, but he really wasn't, he was just like a, a street rat almost type, type thing. And when they moved him up, you saw him as he was advancing, even though they were, the families were trying to fight over him to knock him down or everything else or try to take him because he rejected other families moving back and forth. He doesn't understand the political aspect. You see that he does he does understand um some emotional feelings. Like he understand how like the pre how the uh, skywalkers, quote unquote, the the pre crogs that end up uh, with the four sensitive kids throw it. He understands that they need breaks and they're being treated poorly. He does get that. Um, he understands portions of humanity. So don't get me twisted. He understands that, but he also understands the cost, right? His cost is very calculated. If you lose some people, okay, we won. Like, who cares if we lose a battle? If we win the overall war, that's his thing. So that's 
like bad guy, when you think of like bad guys, like you think Palpatine cared about like anybody else? No, he cared about power, like ruling and power. That's what he cared about. Do you think like uh you know, like Darth Bane, you think Dar Darth Bane, because you guys brought him up earlier, you think he cared? No, he he destroyed half the 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 sit the one Sith. Like he just went through and started killing people. Like he didn't care, he cared about himself and cared about power. Thrawn does not care about power. Power is is not his primary motive. Thrawn's primary motive is, yeah, right, strategic. Like, I want to win the chess game. That's his big win. It has nothing to do with power. For his own all. survival, the chess yeah. game so he can survive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's it. I mean, that's what he's doing. So you're going to see. So, like, as I think that's purposely why they made Ahsoka so mad. Like, where's your boss? I'm going to find him. Like, they're going to have to have a reckoning at one point where you find this is going to, I'm ruining it for everybody. So if you don't want it room, don't listen to this theory. But the theory is when they get there, Thrawn isn't the bad guy you think he is. Right. No, 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 no. But there's something else to come. There's a bigger batter that he's been right about. He's been fanatic about it, but he's right. Like there is a bigger batter. And you know what? Jen brought up something earlier because she asked me about what's the thing. Like Thrawn used to have this uh, cat lizard thing. Oh, the yes, Salamari. Yeah, the Yasalamari. And that's kind of plays into like why it's cool to have Sabine Wren and Ahsoka. This we're gonna stop this soon, guys, and we'll do another add-on to another add-on. But like why it's cool, because we still have to cover Sloan's story and everything like this. But why it's cool to have that that might show back up or something, because if you bring in the Vong, right? Like now you have Ahsoka and Sabine up there beside like you've already used Ezra to kind of get the path to find out that the Vong are the big bad, right? The big bad. And then they've, the Vong are force canceling, right? They're force canceling. But what kind of we've seen in some of the books is they may have kidnapped a Skywalker or two. So if you want to sneak on there, you're going to have to have those uh, lizard things to get onto them. That's a little bit too deep for everybody. That's not, I mean, that's I a puzzle, tonight, baby. And puzzle I'm missing. Um, so, what is the tie back of, of these hands and the Inquisitors kind of back to Thrawn? Like, let's say they do bring Mara Jade in. There's part of her that should be bad, right? Or should be... Right. So how is that going to tie Thrawn to this? Or how is how is these hands and the dark side of the Force going to tie back into this? Here it is. Here it is. When Ahsoka Tana and Sabine Wren show up to accost Thrawn... Thrawn goes, yes, I used Ezra. This is how I was using him. In the meantime, he's been corrupted by a redhead. Uh, and they team up worse. to get him because, yeah, and they came up. And they get, Grogu happen. is susceptible not, that's, to the dark side That's of the not a bad, uh, that that's is not not bad, bad theory at all. Because did you see, remember, Grogu is kind of a little, he's fearful. He's a little bad. We don't know if he's bad or good. When he was in his trance, who knows? It could have been not a Jedi. Oh, or yeah, his eyes turned black. I mean, you could have her come down. You could have her come down like that, too. I just think I was just I was just rolling off of Jen's theory. That's what I, I was rolling off of. Man. Last scene of the... you smiling at? You got good theories, everyone. So I wrote you guys. Okay, here, here, here is to take that out to now into crazy speculation land. Last scene of the series, he gets Grogu full Sith, and he chops off Mando's head, and the series is over. See, I was thinking like a force choke, and that would be enough for him to be oh, like, oh, Grogu force choke. Oh. Yeah. And then he'd be like, Grogu, Finn. and then Grogu comes out of it. I don't know. It's Wolf and Cop. Finn. And Cub, and they're trying to introduce you to, they're trying to introduce you to mainstream to as many characters as they can so they can sell as much merchandise as they can because Solo Wookiee, what sells? Everything Star Wars. So yeah. chunky. I mean, like, if you're, if you're, if you're if you're the merch, you gotta get everything. Like if you're in season seven, and you already sold three hundred million dollars of Grogu toys. Make them bad and force choke Mando in the last. I'm just Grogu saying. and lightsaber. No, 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 no. Are, oh, wait, right. you're, gonna see, you're, no you're gonna see. No, this is. Oh, I'm about to kill Grogu. Uh, so, <laughs> see, all all of a sudden, you see uh, Iron uh, Hulk Buster. Oh, Iron <laughs> Yeah, Iron <laughs> Hogbuster Gideon come flying down. What's up, Britt? Thank you very much. <laughs> Hogbuster Gideon, that is art done by Britt. So if you see my Instagram, that's who did that art. She's great at it. So Moff uh, Gideon I, I, was I a good guy all along. Comes down, 
cuts off uh, Boba's, uh, or not Boba, Mando's head. At that point, we get the force choke by Grogu. And all of a sudden, you see uh, Luke Skywalker land down on his head and chop him off. And you get Baby Yoda's head rolling now. <laughs> and the other end. The end. Uh, Finn. 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 And people are screaming and setting their TVs on. Oh. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Good we night. have Ryan again, and nobody knows why. <laughs> Hey, for yeah. one who's watched other cartoons, he's I'm sure he's seen Last Airbender, so that could happen. This well, could happen. No, you know who did Filoni. Last Airbender? Yeah, Jed, go ahead. Tell him. Filoni worked on, on Airbender for the first season. Oh, this is happening. We solved the yeah, we just ruined Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Um <laughs> Hey, this oh, and by the way, everybody, I just want you to know that none of that is probably going to happen. That was totally our own made up story. So, <laughs> yeah, don't that is not a rumor. Do not. Uh, original art with uh, uh, Grogu's head rolling around with Luke Skywalker. Yeah, don't, don't, please don't go over to I for a dollar, change stuff. Don't go and rewrite things. On I would movie. buy that comic book. I would yeah, go out no. today and buy that comic book. Not matching with IMBD. Seriously. <laughs> Don't do it anymore, guys. I'm telling you. <laughs> not, not as funny as everybody thinks it is. All right. No, um, you guys said Thrawn was the big baddie. If Grogu is the big baddie, that would be the that would Yeah. Well, I mean, like, think too, like if you can open up, like if you can, you can open this back up, which we think, you know, this character is coming around because they keep introducing that armor like you keep seeing stuff that has to do with that armor or seeing stuff that has to do with those people all the yeah. time so like you can slow introduce at like mando's the big introduce right like you introduce everything you're introducing all the characters from the cartoons you're introducing backstory characters you're introducing this you're introducing that you're throwing all the stuff out there and it is very interesting to see what people are trying to gravitate towards like you know like it's just interesting. You know, if you ever go to MCM, we talk more about that that portion of it and kind of like what fans are actually buying, what other type of people are actually buying. But like for here, like it's kind of interesting and kind of cool because you get people who are even, I know we make fun of it a little bit, but like to hear people be so passionate that that Mandalorians were taking off their helmets, like I'm okay with that. Like, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. go ahead and feel free to tell me I'm wrong. Absolutely. That's fine. I have no yeah. problem with that. Go ahead and tell me I'm wrong because you, you can. And I'll be like, all right. It's good like, to I want to see the passion. I just yeah. want yeah, to see the passion. passion. And not the hater aid. Like, that was a yeah. problem. Was, you know, there was so little passion for Star Wars recently in those last three movies that it wasn't that even. And you look. You, you know I wasn't a fan a fan of the last movie, but throughout all three of those movies, there was so little pa- there was so little passion in Star Wars that the hater aid voice got very very loud. It did, and it kept repeating. It and it's hard to have an objective opinion on any of those movies. Yes, when everybody's yelling about how because you're hearing all the time how bad everything was. Go back and wa- they did the same thing to Solo. Solo yeah. is, now Solo is one of the most beloved movies, but they did the same thing to Solo. Same they thing with one, two, and three. Yeah, they, I was just going to say they did the same thing with you know Phantom Menace and, and uh, all the others. Attack but, of the Clowns. Oh, and, and, oh sorry, Wookie, I cut you off. But I was going to say, you know what's really interesting about Mandalorian, which didn't exist with the prequels and those other ones, was there were passionate people, but I think the passion waned. But there was definitely diametrically opposed hater aid, like. I am seeing so many people on, that were on both sides of the fence of, of Rise of Skywalker, loved it, hated it. Everybody is loving Mando, man. Of the yeah. 501st, the boards used to be haterade apologists. Now it's like, what's coming next? This is awesome. Yeah. What's going to happen? Yeah, I mean, I think, well, okay, it's two parts, too. There's nothing else on. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> There's nothing else on. What are you no. going to watch? You're going to watch uh, those two Canadian guys that keep redoing houses or what? Is, is that show even on? You're going to watch it, what? Grey's Anatomy? Is that still on? I, I don't watch the Black it. Widow trailer probably about 700 times. Yeah, the, 15th, the 15th album of voice. Is that show still Whatever's still on, you're going to watch that or are you going to watch something fun? So, like, yeah, if you criticize it, then the question is what else are you going to watch? That kind of takes away some of that hater rate. Number two, but let's, let's not get it twisted. Number two, there's a lot of people who are trying to guess of what's going to happen, right? Like, 
we do some fan stuff where we kind of guess, but look, man, we don't care if we're right or wrong. Right. Yeah. Want to do this stuff. Yeah. But yeah. there's people eventually who keep getting wrong, who are going to be really wrong. And that turns to hate or aid real quickly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, well I there's, mean, there's just like you said, there's so little on, I mean, I just discovered this new rock band, uh, led, led, um, yeah, Zeppelin. Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, just cause I'm starting to listen to music again. Because I love so Painted good. Black by them. It's my favorite song by them. Well, there's this TV show they got, this cartoon called Ren and Stimpy that I've never seen before. It's pretty funny. You guys should all check that out. Um, I'll, have to, I'll have to inspect that one. But anyways, we will do. A, we should do a video. We should do a little short video where we all, maybe we'll invite some people to, uh, and we can all rank our, uh, rank the things. But I, I think. Crazy I think, theories? No, we could rank uh, all the cinematic versions. Oh, Yes. Are yeah. we going to rank them or are we going to rank or them? <laughs> well, we can rank all of them except for number nine. That doesn't count. So, like, the rest of them we can rank. Um, rank or. Yeah, like, I think if you look back on most of them, that's kind of it, too. Like, you had the internet kind of coming out, one, two, three, so it was easy to have hate, like, internet trolls. And obviously, some of the internet trolls try to flow over to uh, Solo, which didn't turn out too well. And if you look at how events are going now, too, some of the stuff that happened in the last three, excluding the last movie, is not there. You know that when they did when they had the uh, number eight day or whatever like that, it was you know doing pretty well. So yeah. I'm, yeah. look, nine's never going to be good in my books, but you never know. Yeah, I mean, well, you, you don't think it happens when people get like really in the trenches about this is what I want to have happen. It doesn't happen. Now I'm upset. I think so. And then, I think so. And then with, with Mandalorian, it's, it's in a realm where we don't have any preconceived notions of it. We're just getting it. And we're like, this is great. But then as the, as the seasons go on, you're right. People start digging trenches in and being like, well, I want to see this. And if you don't see it, they're going to upset That's it. A good point. Yeah. Like, like Thrawn's not showing up at the end of Mandalorian. And there's a lot of people who think it is. And when that doesn't happen, We'll see. I mean, we'll see. You know, like, well, I thought, well, you know, we'll be honest with it. We were huge. All of us were on here shouting about how Ahsoka Tana was not going to show up in a third commercial. They weren't going to have her in seven, eight episodes. That's not happening. They're going to have her in one episode. Might be a cameo. Like, paper your expectations, people. And I think part of the reason why we were saying that wasn't because we wanted to be right. We just wanted people to enjoy it. And and yeah. I think we felt that if people thought like Ahsoka Tana is going to be in eight episodes and all of a sudden she doesn't show up. Like, come on, man. We all secretly not telling everybody was like, we hope she shows up in the day one because we want him to get the credit for doing it. But we were tapering everybody's expectations just in case she didn't because you want them to stick around and have that passion so much till eight's done. Because I love it. I love that people love Star Wars. Like, but I don't like... Friends, right, right? Like, now they're reimagining these old characters. So the diehard fans, and they're accepting of it, right? They're accepting a new Thrawn. They're accepting that Ahsoka Tano in live action, mm. right? But when these... I don't know. Fans, well, well, I don't know if they are, but as more people get passionate about this new show, like, it's the biggest thing since sliced bread. It's going to happen down the road. They're going to start getting mad when their theory doesn't come true. Like season four, season five, when they thought this is going to happen or that's going to happen. Um, it's it's bound to happen because we know how the Star Wars fans are, right? They they get their their passion is so deep and they get so mad. But you I know? don't think it's the truth. Like it's some of it. Like you got tens of thousands of people sell, going to celebration all year long and it is the happiest if you guys oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the happiest there's no criticism the criticism right. is like the criticism is southern criticism you know and like yeah. the southern people criticize something they but don't it, really like it hurts because you know they're criticizing yeah you. not really it's not criticism it. it's like when you build some up I'll, I'll give you an example 1999 i'm going in to see phantom menace i had built that up in my head to be, it was going to be just in the best thing in the, you know, and then Jar Jar came out and I was, it was literally like somebody just, you know, oh, you know, wrecked my new Christmas present. I was like, <laughs> so what criticism it was more just like. Besides, besides looking back on Jar Jar and feeling like too high. Yeah. You, yeah. 
Well, see, this is the problem. With nine, I literally went in with zero expectation, expecting it to just end. Please just end this. <laughs> At this point, I mean, you guys know, like, e people watching have not even seen. You can't repeat what I talk about in private about that movie. Like, it's that bad. Um, but, like, well, Jar Jar, now looking you back on it, the character doesn't get it that well. But, like, I never had a problem oh, with it. Like, I understood it. What's that? You get tears of joy when you talk about nine and then you well up and you start, they trickle down a little bit and you're like, God, it was just so good. And it was just the end. And it was just, I'm full of joy that it's gone and it's ended. And I, and I love. I wish you would end talking right now. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what happens for all of you wondering out there. That's what happens off camera with Marco mm -hmm. talking about nine. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think he's feeling like Jason Solo wanting to kill the Wookiee right now. He yeah, cries. Yeah. He That's cries good. at the credits because he's. Oh, so our next episode is going to be Jason the Wookiee story, or Jason <laughs> yeah, killing the Wookiee. Um, but look, this is what this is my question though is like, what happens when Luke Skywalker doesn't show up? What happens when Thrawn, if he does or does, what, what what happens if they don't? Have Thrawn show up. We know that they were they're 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 minimizing the script now and letting these guys run with a lot of stuff. They're giving like 20 minute scripts to people and having them try to expand it for as long as they can. Yeah. Like that's not a lot. What happens right. when they and they're using different directors all the time? What happens when they're not they start getting you know two bad scripts in two bad directors in a row not bad as in like they're not good but like it just was a bad fit mm -hmm. if they get back to bad bad fits what happens that's what i my biggest worry about this is what happens when people go <coughs> like oh wait a minute we were expecting because we were so hyped now we're we're going back and trying to remember all the stuff of our childhood we're trying to remember like an heir to the empire and that that we didn't read the new novels we didn't read the new comics we don't understand that's not the same person. What happens when they're like, oh, well, you gave us, Dave, you said that the time lapse isn't there. So then why isn't Luke Skywalker dropping on a planet and train? And I'm not saying that he isn't going to come and do that, but like the likelihood is not high. So what happens when these fans who know Luke Skywalker and don't know who uh, Cal is or who don't know who a Yadwell is or who don't know who... Sarah is who, who Even don't Mace do right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, but Filoni say Mace Windu one more time, just because he's got a better Filoni shot of playing Wars Pulp Fiction trouble. again. Go oh, ahead. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, I was just going to say, look what Filoni did in Clone Wars, and look what he did in Rebels. He had no problem with bringing May characters in as little cameos or back, you know, background. I liked what you had said earlier. I think it was you, Marco, that said maybe Luke's, maybe Mark Hamill shows up. And he just is like, yeah, I can't, I can't train this, you know, I'm too busy or yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah, and, I, yeah. I, I don't. And like I said, the only part of the only reason I say that is because Mark Hamill during the last three movies said, look, I, we're doing this. We're going to finish it. We're going to end it. And I'll come back for little snippets and cameos or whatever, but yeah. I'm not, I'm not in it to win it again. It's not, I, I'm doing fun things in life and it's yeah. not where I want to take the rest of my career. So and then they don't ride the Skywalker story forever. No. And they want to end it. And, and what do you do? Recast Luke Skywalker. That's going to go over like a fart in church. Sebastian Stan is Luke yeah. Skywalker. <laughs> that's what not I'm really saying. Is not, what I'm saying is not help. That's why I'm worried. Okay. That's not helping anything. No. no. It that is. is doing like, oh, this is a cool piece of artwork. Yeah, I thought it was too for other things. And then all of a sudden I saw what they were doing and what people's responses were. And I was like, oh, we're coming to it again. We're coming to six or to seven, eight, and nine. Like yeah. for all of us that know what happened, for all of us that was around, we saw what was going on. People were doing, there's a lot of fan art being shot. There's a lot of fan videos being shot. There's a lot of stuff going on. And we saw what happened. So, like, enjoy the ride and, like, yeah. set yeah. your expectations properly. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. right. Before you know it, you know, you could have Kevin Feige coming in and then you have a big purple guy snapping his fingers wearing the skull helmet. And that, that would... <laughs> Expect the worst and hope for the best. I yeah. mean, it, yeah. it, 
You can have Iron Man 2, 3. Yeah. You can easily have Iron Man 2 and 3. It, it, my problem is... Or resistance. You can have resistance. Yeah, resistance. Yeah. Ooh, I know, Sky. I get it. You love it. But, like... My problem is I'm such a big Filoni slappy, and he's got 14 seasons of cartoon material that was so well plotted. And they're following the old trope of the hero's journey and the, the, the lone wolf and the cub that he's kind of earned my, my optimism. Yeah, absolutely. And in, in Filoni, we trust, I mean, he's, you absolutely hit the nail on the head. He's done so good on so many things that we've already seen. Um, it, it's, it's fun for me as a fan to sit back in the chair and just let him take us on another adventure yeah. in the story. Because I don't just talk about the Western, the samurai, the hero's journey, and all of that, because it puts me in my comfort zone that says he knows what he's doing. He's a disciple of Lucas. He's a disciple of, there. it is a rinse and repeat, but it's a rinse and repeat of mythology as a whole, not rinse and repeat of, like, Force Awakens was almost a shot for shot of New Hope. That's not what Filoni and Favreau are doing. Yeah. It's it's a mythology reshoot, like the Seven Samurai, right? It's it's going back far enough and reintroducing old tropes to new audiences. I just want to remind everybody of two things before we get this brand new hope. I'm not <laughs> trying to crush everybody's things. Iron Man 2 and 3 and Star Wars Resistance. You just, just know they're around, coming. <laughs> just know they're coming. We just hope they don't do yeah. that much damage. Yeah, you know that's the that's the hope. I still feel like Resistance like had had a chance. Like it, it kind of. If you watch Clone Wars season one and you watch Rebel season one, they were great. People. Yeah, and then and the thing is, is like he was starting to split his time doing, doing other things, so he kind of he kind of stepped away from it. So I don't think we got full Dave Filoni. Finishing what he thought resistance would be, and I like that Misha Gray. That was it. Was it that was it Misha Gray? What was that character I told you about, Marco? Hmm. What for for resistance? Yeah, the yeah, archaeologist. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just yeah. I'm ready for my, no. I want you to go because I'm ready to record. I have a question for you. Um, we always see, I always see like eye to eye with you, so this is the one I'm going to kill you on. Well, <laughs> there was two seasons of that show. So which one was he distracted on? Season one? Oh, which was both of them, though? It was both of them. Which was complete. Yeah. Which was it was both of them. He, he he didn't get he didn't get his full like from my understanding, they're already pulling him into doing Mandalorian and then pulling him into doing other things. And hey, here's this, 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 and this, and like learn like they were already grooming him for Mandalorian. Right. And so when, he was the last was, season of Clone Wars. When was I thought that was done during Resistance too? <laughs> No, it That's was during right. the second season of the first season was already done by the time he started working on the, the second season of Clone Wars, which was then they pulled him away from that to do Mandalorian too. Right. So like there was in, yes, I agree with second, see second season. Sure. You can make that excuse. Second season though was better than the first season. The but first I didn't think he was the creator of, he was he the creator of resistance. I thought he was just like, they like just a, him on, I thought, yeah. No, I mean, I thought I think he had more hands to deal with that because he was not just he was really when you first start hearing him talk about it, like when he was showing up at like uh, he was pretty much claiming it. So oh. I, I don't know. What that, I mean, that, but then that's what he's doing right now. Right. Like he's really only directing and writing one one show. Right. He's really the overseer. So if you say that he didn't oversee resistance, well, I'm temper. I, I'm Ahsoka timing it again. I love Dave. You know I'm the I've been the first person and I have always been hammering that drum for a long time. And Dave we trust. But do know that when he fails us, do not jump ship. Yeah. Come right on back because he's going to give us good stuff. Just don't like don't kill him. Oh, that's the Dave ghost. My house is going to crack down now. I oh, I, so I got a I got a question from Marco on a, a scale of one to five rings, how many rings would you buy Dave Filoni? How much do you love him? Would you buy him two rings, four rings, five rings, or one ring? 
I wouldn't buy him any more than four because that's how many I bought my wife. So he doesn't get any more than that, bro. <laughs> well, hey, guys, I just want to tell you, I forgave George Lucas for Phantom Menace right around 2006. I will forgive Filoni if he does this. It took me 16 years, but I eventually forgave him. Never forgive Han shot first, bro. Um, <laughs> I love that they did that that tie in in the the holiday special, the new one. They yeah, did. I, that was so good. I don't know if anybody like I don't even know why he stands so strong with that. Like just just erase that, bro. Yeah, like get back. Like every Dave too. Dave has said it before. He's like, I don't know what's wrong with them. Like Han shot first. Like every, he Dave had said it. I wish I could find the clip of this. Dave was on a yeah. stage one time at a celebration, I think, and Lucas was there. And Dave came out, and they're like, Yeah, da, 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 the cheering or whatever. And they're like, Is there anything you want to say? He's like, Yeah, Han shot first. And like George is there, man, right in George's eye. He says Han shot first, and like, you know, like come on, bro, like give it to us, like. Well, George kept going back, like even what was it five years ago when they when they blu rayed it? He he tweaked it again. It's like there's some obsession he has where he just does not want Han to be his character. <laughs> it's because uh, you wrote something, and then uh, Harrison Ford saved your your uh, trilogy. Uh, with that being said, Solo Wookie. Let's go get our promo stuff. Let's get us out of here. This has been way too long. Hopefully, everybody's having fun. Hopefully, whatever the holiday is, we're around. You're having a good holiday. Give it to us, Solo Wookie. All right, everybody. Please go down to Bird City Comics. Visit our friends down there and give them a shout out. Please use promotion code DARKSIDE, D-A-R-K-S-H-D-E, to get 15% off on your purchases. And show them a love and watch Laura and Jen on Comic Book Women Tuesday nights right here on this channel, Comic Book Women on Tuesdays. Thanks, Bird City. Also, please go over to Comic Book Barricade. These things are great. These things will stop the slide of the books. They prevent the deadly spine tick that nobody likes. These are great products. I love them. I have a couple. I use them, and they have saved my butt numerous times. Um, you use code FLIPSIDE and get 10% off. <coughs> Please visit Four Color Creations and tell them that you love our show, and their stuff is amazing. Please check out all of his products and all of his engravings. Very good stuff. And go down there and force push that like and subscribe. <laughs> and then go over and saber strike that bell so you can be alarmed when these great topics and voices come to discuss with you all of these fun <laughs> things. <laughs> and may the force be with you. Always. Always. Mark, are you saying something? We can't hear you. <laughs> oh, you right, don't, forget out Low Bricks. don't forget to check out Low Bricks. You guys are blowing up over there. They're doing a great job. Uh, they had 100. I appreciate everybody that went over there and watched them and checked out Leaky and his son. That's a great thing. They're doing really good. Sorry, I was on mute. I'm yelling over here. I don't oh, know why. Sorry, I, was, I, I didn't even know where to get low bricks, but I could. Yeah, I didn't yeah. do, but well, I was having so much fun watching Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were. I thought you were like like winding him or something. You know, yeah. Rookie after the uh, after the oh, last. I got because like okay, listen. Go check out the low bricks. Go check out uh, the comic book women on Tuesday. They're doing great. Solo Wookie, you guys and MCM. That is a great show. Check out the Saturday night MCM. I show up every once in a while. You never know who I'm gonna be there or not. But Solo will be there at all times with our boys Kyle, Matt, and uh, Coben. Corbin, I'm always screwing up Corbin's name because he likes I DC. And I don't have like a special guest coming in off and on. Um, I think this Saturday, I'm not 100% positive, but I think Adonis might jump in. Cool. Well, if he was there or not, just remember these are pre recorded. So if you hear stuff on here and you're like, why are these guys getting stuff right? We just, we're no to look, that's how it goes. All right. Bet Club.
Fight Club.